The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show, a hoop ball presentation. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Neil Rochlani. And this episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Taste the Kona difference and head over to HawaiianIsles.com and Amazon. Get some delicious coffee. Neil, how are you doing, sir? The season is about to wrap up. For most people, this is like the final day of the season. Most head-to-head leagues end today. How are you doing, sir? My... My goodness. I am experiencing the agony of ah. Adrian. Two championship matchups, two losses. It's um Brute. It's a bitter pill to swallow. But um I guess um I guess I can learn something from it. Anyway, hope you're doing better than uh, me. I you know, my I got taken out in most of my leagues a week ago. So uh I but I've been there, man. I know what it's like. It's it's uh it's really tough when you get to that championship week, you know, when you got a shot to win a title and you fall short. I know it's tough, man. I know it's tough. It's like you almost would rather not even be in that spot to win because it's like more of a letdown. But man, I think you still gotta pat yourself on the back, man. I think you had a really successful year, making it to the finals in two of your leagues. Um, you you won your roto league, right? Which is difficult. Yeah, home league, home league, I'll win. That finishes. So heck, man. I'm comfortably. Are ahead. you kidding? Yeah, I just look at that one now. I don't even look at my other one because it doesn't. The other I mean, one victory. A lot of people think roto leagues are actually more difficult than head to head leagues. So a victory in a roto league, second place in two head to head leagues. Uh, Neil, still a successful season, man. Yeah, but you know, it's. What did you see? What was the movie? <laughs> You're not first. You're last. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, anyway, no, I, I got beaten by people who know what they're doing, so my hat's off to them. They definitely played the week well. And I'm also just, um, you know, I benefited in prior weeks to, to random rest days, and, and this week I was on the other side of it. So I can't really. All right, that. well, let's jump in these box scores, man. We actually got a decent slate of games to go over uh, for a Sunday night. Uh, As I mentioned, I know a lot of you guys are, your seasons are wrapping up today. So, Neil, I don't know how many people are still going. I mean, I know I'm still in a roto league where we go to the very last day. So I'm guessing if you're still, if you're still competing, you're in those kind of leagues, right, Neil? Pretty, or there might be some head-to-head leagues that go another week. What do you think? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think that's all we can talk about now is really pickup has gotten really ridiculous with guys that are playing um we'll get to a gentleman I, I, some of these players adrian i had no idea like have you ever heard, heard of bonzi colson <laughs> never i can't even <laughs> what, team, what team is that guy well i'll tell you this he played 41 minutes and double double <laughs> you'll find out soon enough he's in the very first line the first interesting game. anyway any news before we jump into um <sighs> looking at some of these players who I I mean, just a lot of shutdowns, right? We're hearing LeBron James is done, but you know, we could talk. We could talk about that though. Uh, The Lakers actually played the Pelicans tonight, so we could talk about that later. But anything else you're seeing that might be worth a mention? No, um, no, I don't know um, uh, why. Why? uh, Well, Bledsoe's coming off the bench. That was weird. He never played, and then Middleton was out, and. yeah, that was kind of strange. If he's going to play, why is he coming off? Anyway, that never transpired. It's kind of a weird news note. Um, another thing, really, except for, yeah, guys just resting all over the place. And LeBron being shut down, I guess, is the biggest story. Um, yeah, really? That's it. A lot a lot of fantasy stats tonight. A lot of guys who, who if you somehow were able to uh, play this right, could have really helped. Oh, all right. Um, it, my turn? Uh, yeah. My turn to leave? Yeah, I, think I think so, too. I think it is. Okay, I believe the 
first game of the day was the Milwaukee Bucks and the Atlanta Hawks. A very tight game here. This one went to overtime, 136 to 135. The Hawks getting the victory. I'm going to jump in on the Bucks. You know, we mentioned, Neil, how brutal is it, man? Like, if you're in a tight, you're in championship week. It's the final day. You're in like a head-to-head tight race. And let's say you got Giannis and like Middleton, uh, Bledsoe didn't play. I mean, how brutal is it if like you lost your matchup because at the last second these guys didn't play? Just uh, this really tough pill to swallow, man. But anyways, so we saw some interesting lines from uh, guys like Frazier. And um, I'm going to take a look and see what happened here. As I mentioned, Frazier, 20 points, 15 assists, 7 rebounds, 2 threes. He shot 8 of 17 from the field. Played 53 minutes, so played a lot. Um, Neil, as you mentioned, Colson, 41 minutes here. Uh, you know, only shot 5 of 18, but still put up a nice line. 15 points with 16 boards, 2 assists, a steal, a block, 1-3. Uh, Wilson, you know, we, I kind of like this guy, DJ Wilson, but, uh, you know, he just hasn't had any production because the Bucks are so heavy up front. Their starters take up so much of that production load, but with those guys all sitting, he played nice 12 points, five assists, seven boards, shot four of 11, had two threes. Brown, 27 points for him, nine rebounds, three assists, three steals, a block, uh, five threes, some really nice production here from uh, from these guys. Uh, Brooke Lopez, 19 points. And um, sorry, my box score is kind of getting uh, wigging out on me. One steal, three assists, six rebounds. He had three threes. He's had a spectacular season. Uh, some nice production off the bench. Connaughton has 17 points. And uh, 12 rebounds. You know, we've mentioned him in the past as a possible deep league streamer. George Hill had a nice game. He's really tough to trust. Neil, do you think these starters are going to sit more? Do you think some of these uh, guys who, as you mentioned, we never even heard of, should we be kind of picking these guys up for the final week here? What do you think about the Bucks? Yeah, I mean, I think the Bucks. they're three games up on Toronto. Um, with uh, five to play. So they're probably safe. They probably just need to win one more. Um, I, I thought they would have done today against Atlanta. They would have played a couple of good players and just got the win out of the way. Um, but uh, it didn't work out that way. Um, they're at Brooklyn. They're at Philly. You got Atlanta getting home. So maybe that's what that'll be that win. Yeah, I think they're going to rest. I, I think Giannis is not going to play more than a couple of games of the last five. Um I didn't know Bledsoe was going to rest, though, along with um, Middleton. I thought those guys were pretty safe. But, you know, the only guy I really think is safe is Lopez among the starters at this point. Um, and then Connaughton, believe it or not, I think is relatively safe because he's not going to rest. Um, and it seems like he's the first guy in line when someone is resting. So in terms of off the bench, um, Sterling Brown, Wilson, Colson, Frazier, these are all really dependent on the starter city. I don't, I couldn't trust any of them, but I guess that they do sit maybe the last couple games of the season, once they clinch the one seed, you can you can roll these guys out there, but maybe next game, I would just con Ken Lopez and see the starting lineup. So hard to know, Adrian. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know about this, except until like the last two games. Um, so yeah, I would not uh, rush out to get them, but if you see the day before people are rolled out, then yeah, of course. So we'll see. Yeah, I agree with that, man. Uh, all right, on the Atlanta side, um, uh, Justin Anderson uh, fills it up here, 24 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists. On the wide strip, Trey tra- Young, 12 points, 5 rebounds, 16 assists, 2 steals. John Collins, a uh, monster game here, 23 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks. Alex Lang gets in the starting role for Deadman, 23 points, 6 rebounds. Herder, uh, quiet night here, uh, just nine points, um, three rebounds, four assists, and a block. Off the bench, Bembry had a nice game, uh, fantasy-wise. He's someone I'm probably trusting uh, down the stretch for pickups. Um, he has gotten uh, three steals, one steal, four steals, one steal. He's got a, 
multiple steals in those last three or six games. He's gotten um, other handful of stats too. So I think he's okay to stream among guys that are maybe available. Um, Justin Anderson, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. Is, do you think he could be, uh, he's the one guy I think I'll, who else might be available that I would consider picking up? What, do you th- what are your thoughts on Yeah, that? you know, what's really interesting is, Neil, uh, about three seasons back, I actually thought very highly of Justin Anderson. This is, I think, when he was with the Dallas Mavericks. I thought he was going to become a really solid pro, and then just never happened. And we saw glimpses here tonight. So, yeah, I think if Justin Anderson, if, like, we knew for sure he was going to start the rest of the way and have a role like he had tonight, I mean, 31 minutes and he took 16 shots. Like, if I knew he was going to get that kind of role for the rest of I would say he I feel pretty I feel pretty good about picking him up but I not 100% sure that that's guaranteed. I think you know we could see Baysmore or I like your take on Bembry. We could see him step up. So um uh, I wouldn't be mad at you if you want to pick up Justin Anderson and see what happens. And then the other side, too, I also wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we see somebody else step up in the next one. So really hard to say. Also, Terry and Prince miss this one. I don't know if that's if he's going to miss more games or if he's uh, I did hear that. I think Deadman is done. Deadman is shut down for the rest of the year. But I'm not sure about Prince. Mm-hmm. But and, anyway, what do you think about it? Yeah, it all comes back to Prince being out, and then is it going to be Anderson or Bembry? Um, that's why I trust Bembry. He seems to get minutes even when Prince is in. Um, so Prince hasn't played the last, uh, I believe, three games, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll see if he comes back. I don't think they have any reason to play him, so there's a good chance he'll be shut down again. There's been no official news, though, on how long he'll be out. So, um, anyway... Uh, that's all I got on this side. No one else I think is worth picking up that might be available. Maybe, oh, Alex that's Len, sorry. You said you said Demons yeah, Dumpers. Yeah, leave Demons Yeah, done. absolutely. Alex Len then. Okay, then I'm sorry. And then Len for sure. It's yeah, good. I think that's a great take. Um, we've seen Len have some nice games, uh, so maybe he can step up if uh, since Deadman's done. All right, I'm going to jump over to the next one, Neil. I think it's the Mavericks and the Thunder. The, another close one, man. Um Dallas, this is surprising, man. Dallas getting the victory, 106 to 103. Neil, no Luka Doncic. The Thunder are, like, fighting for seeding here. This is, like, a big loss for them. The Mavericks not really, you know, they don't really have much to play for here. So let's. I'm going to take a look on the Dallas side. As I mentioned, no Doncic. That's pretty disappointing for me. I got him in my Roto Leagues where I'm still playing. But a guy that I picked up, Neil, and I've been pretty happy uh, Jalen Brunson, 18 points, a steal, four assists, two rebounds, one three, five of 11 from the field, seven of 10 from the line. He looks locked and loaded. I don't know if uh, Luca's going to miss more games, but uh, if he is, it's just more usage for Brunson. And even if Luca does play, Brunson still puts up some uh, solid production. So make sure, I mean, Brunson's likely already rostered everywhere, but. Um, if he's floating around in your league, you might want to snatch him up. Dwight Powell with 11 points, 9 rebounds, 1-3. He only shot 4-14, did have 5 turnovers, but he's been pretty solid. So keep him locked in your lineup. Dirk Nowitzki, uh, you know, Neil, they're really ramping up his minutes. I feel like he's playing like close to 30 minutes a game here lately. I don't know if it's because they think this is like the end and they just like want to uh, send him out, um, you know, with a big workload kind of, to end his career. I don't know if he's retiring. Is he coming back? We don't know, but we're definitely seeing an uptick in minutes for Nowitzki. I still don't think he's really worth an ad. Uh, it's really hard to trust him, but had a, had a pretty good game here tonight with seven points and 13 rebounds. Um, Lee, nine points. Don't trust him. Only 17 minutes. Jackson, he's shown glimpses of good production, but tonight didn't really have it. Only four points in 13 minutes. You know, off the bench, Trey Burke played really nice. Probably getting some extra run here with no Luka. 25 points for him in 31 minutes. He also had um, he also had eight assists 
and um, four threes, 10 of 18 shooting. So it's a nice game from him. Uh, 15 minute or 15 points from Harris, but he only played 17 minutes. I don't really trust him to put up good production off the bench in his role. Neil, what do you think of the uh, Mavericks? Yeah, I don't know if Luke is sitting extended time or just one game here. I thought they, he'd play with Dirk a little bit, you know, to kind of maybe do some, get those guys out there together. I think this is Dirk. You know, I think you're right about he is uh, going to have a send off here of extended minutes um, in the 20s, maybe high 20s. Uh, but I don't think fantasy worthwhile. Um, maybe Justin Jackson. Um, uh, Hardaway, like you said, is done for the season before. Doncic's out. Um, uh, Trey Burke had a big night. I think he might be worth a stream if Doncic's out again, but. I would still rather have Brunson between the two. And then uh, Powell. It's really just Brunson and Powell that I trust. And then everyone else, um, I think you kind of get a shot on. So, uh, yeah, I wish I could trust. I mean, Jackson's got 13 minutes here. Um, so maybe Kleber. I know other people have kind of advocated for him. I've never been a fan of his game um, translating to fantasy. So unless he gets a lot of minutes. So I'm, I'm kind of staying away from him. Uh, that's it. I'm going to hop over to OKC. Like you said, though, really disappointing loss for them. I mean, they, they had all their guns going out there. Uh, big nights from the big three. George, 27-11. Uh, five three-pointers, two steals on a block. Great night as usual. Last book, triple-doubles, 25-11-11. and 11. Um, Three three-pointers, two steals. He actually made all his free throws, so that was good to see. Steven Adams, 20 points, 15 rebounds, two assists, um, two blocks. So he had a solid game here, shot 10 of 17 from the field. Jeremy Grant did all right, 14 points, three rebounds, two steals. I mean, excuse me, two three-pointers, a steal block. Um, Terrence Ferguson, as usual, not much. Dennis Schroeder played 34 minutes. Uh, had an okay night, but nothing great. Um, it's really disappointing. They're at home against a Dallas team that's not really trying to win. They're playing Dirk, high minutes not playing their uh, rookie sensation, so I don't know what happened here. It's weird. The Thunder, they can sometimes play with the best of the best and lose to the worst of the worst. It's very bizarre. Uh, anyway, nothing changes here. Like, I think you said they're playing for their playoff seating life, so I don't think they're going to be um, you know, tanking or holding guys out unless something serious comes up. So, No changes there. Any thoughts on you on that? Uh, excuse me, Oklahoma City? I think, as you said, you know, with them playing with that seeding, I mean, every win or loss is the difference between maybe getting the fifth seed or the eighth seed. So I think it's kind of a blessing if you have Paul George, Stephen Adams, Westbrook, Grant on your roster. I mean, we likely are going to see them play up until the end. Um, so it's, it's kind of good if you have the Thunder because, uh, you know, they really can't afford to rest their stars. So, um, yeah, that's all I got, man. Let's jump over to the next game, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Pelicans. Um, uh, Neil, it is dark days for Laker fans. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy that they shut down LeBron James because, uh, you know, why risk him – um, getting like a career ending type of injury for nothing, right? Let's save him for next year. So I understand the shutdown. Very disappointing for fantasy. If you had LeBron on your roster and you were hoping for production from him, you could likely just cut him. Uh, it looks like he's done. But uh, let's take a look at the Lakers that are still playing. One guy who's been playing pretty good, JaVale McGee. Big double-double, 23 points with 16 boards, a steal, a block, three assists, shot 9 of 15 from the field, 5 of 7 from the line. Rondo, this is a nice line from him, 24 points, 12 assists, three steals, four threes, shot 9 of 14 and 2 of 2 from the line. Let's hope he can keep this up. Um, Caldwell Pope with 19 points. He shot 8 of 16. Uh, Mo Wagner with 7 points, 2 blocks, and assists, 7 rebounds. You know, he got 29 minutes tonight. I'm not, I don't really trust him. Stevenson put up a goose egg, 0 points in 16 minutes. Caruso had a nice game off the bench. 29 minutes, he had 23 points, 4 steals, 6 assists, 3 rebounds. I'm keeping an eye on him. 
4 of 4 from uh, downtown. He shot 7 of 11 from the field, 5 of 6 from the line. Reggie Bullock showing a pulse. He had 18 points, a steal, 3 assists, 3 rebounds, 4 threes. He shot 7 of, oh, I'm sorry, uh, four. yeah, 4 threes. He shot 6 of 11 from the field in 23 minutes. Um, I don't know, man, if you want to stream Bullock or Caruso, feels a little risky to me, but um, I could see them getting some extended run as the Lakers have nothing to play for. They may just, out of necessity, need to play some of these guys because James is done, Ingram is done, Ball is done for the season, Kuzma didn't play, Josh Hart is done. So, um, I mean, they just got to play some of these guys. So, I don't know, if the Lakers season helps if their Lakers schedule helps you out I'm not mad at you if you want to stream some of these guys Neil what do you think of the Lakers yeah I mean obviously uh, McGee's probably taken Caldwell Pope I like him um although not too much on every side scoring um Rondo's been I think Rondo's worth picking up if he's out there for sure uh a bag, well, well, I don't know how to pronounce the last name Wagner uh or Stevenson, I don't really trust either of them. Caruso, I'd rather roll with. So, yeah, I mean, let's assume McGee's already picked up, Caldwell Pope's already taken, Rondo. Those three guys may have already been streamed by their players. Caruso would be my next one, and then Bullock, uh, and that, those two guys, and that's probably it. Um, although, on any given night, obviously, other guys can go off, but those are, I think, the top five. Lakers, like you said, uh, they're, they're starting five with the season done. So it's, it's crazy, uh, except for McGee, who's still hanging around. Um, all right, on the Pelican side, Anthony Davis sat again. Um, I'm pretty sure he might be done for the season, too. Mm. Um, what do you think? Any thoughts? Well, I'll let, I'll let me do the side, and then you can tell me. Um, Okafor, back in the starting lineup, we said that he got starting again. Uh, maybe we can, we can trust him, especially if um, they give him high minutes tonight, 25 minutes. Not a... 26 minutes, excuse me. Not a bad line. 15 points, four rebounds, one assist. He shot seven and eight from the field. No defensive stats, unfortunately. Randall, kind of a subdued night, too. Just 23 minutes in the blowout. Uh, Kenrich Williams really didn't do anything. Ian Clark, likewise. Peyton, all these guys kind of struggled. Uh, Christian Wood has been the one pickup here. Uh, Double-doubled again tonight. 15 points, 11 rebounds, uh, a steal, a block. He has been solid the last... Um, couple of games, 27 minutes, 28 minutes, 32 minutes, and he has had three really good lines. So somehow he is still out there. I highly recommend picking up him. He's my first priority over Okafor. Um, and the other guys are probably on like Peyton and Randall. So Christian Wood is the one guy I recommend here. Any thoughts on the Pelicans? I think maybe we see Anthony Davis for one more game and it's like 20 minutes and then we see him miss. Uh, you know, they haven't officially shut him down, but why not? You know, uh, we know they're going to move him. Let's not get him hurt. Um, so it makes sense for them to shut him down. I mean, we're already seeing guys like LeBron get shut down. So it's not like, why would the NBA, uh, like, why would they, um, like why would they get in trouble if they sat if they sat Anthony Davis? But they haven't officially done so, so maybe we see Anthony Davis one more game, and it's just limited minutes. Love your take on Christian Wood, Neil. He's sitting on the on the wire in my roto league, my fourteen team. As you said, three solid games in a row. I think it's definitely time to make a move on this guy. Uh, later. Um, Derek White had a miserable game or is having a miserable game. So, you know, maybe I might drop Derek White or Shaq Harrison and make the move on to Christian Wood. And um, let's see. Uh, my last take is Pelicans tanking. So, you know, I think we can continue to see Christian Wood and some of these other guys uh, put up some decent production. I'm, I wish Frank Jackson was playing because uh, he was really nice before he got hurt. Uh any closing thoughts before I jump over to the next one? Yeah, Frank Jackson, too bad he got injured. He looked like he could really shine here the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, let's 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 keep rolling here. The Kings beat the Spurs one thirteen to one oh six. I'll jump in on the Sacramento side first. Uh, I'll start with the. Uh, 
De'Aaron Fox, 12 points, 5 assists, 1 steal, 4 rebounds, 5 of 12 from the field, 2 of 3 from the line, having a great season. Uh, Barnes, 15 points, 2 assists, 4 rebounds, 1 3 on 5 of 12 shooting. He was a perfect 4 of 4 from the line. Buddy Heald, man, what an, a great shooter this guy is. Was 4 of 6 for him downtown. 8 of 15 from the field, had 26 points, was 6 of 7 from the line. He can just really light it up. 1 steal, 3 assists, 5 rebounds he also added. It's a pretty good game from him. Willie Cauley-Stein, who's been very up and down this season, but this was a pretty pretty good game. 17 points, 2 steals, 6 rebounds, shot 6 of 9 from the field, and didn't even hurt you from the line. was a perfect 5 of 5 from there. Uh, Belitza got 10 points, 6 rebounds, shot 4 of 8 from the field. He added 1-3. Off the bench, Bogdanovich had a good game here. 15 points for him, 2 steals, 5 assists, 3 rebounds. He added 2-3, so a the pretty good game from Bogdanovich. Uh, no Bagley in this one. No Giles in this one. So maybe that's why uh, Belitza got some extra run, 26 minutes. Um, Neil, what do you think of the Kings? Uh, yeah, the Bagley is kind of disappointing. Um, other than that, though, they've been kind of holding their – they've been starting all their regular guys. They haven't uh, really, you know, done what other teams have done, even though they're at the playoff race at this point. Um, they obviously want a higher pick. You know, going into next season, I'm not sure. I know there's new uh, draft odds this year, but still think it's, it helps them to lose tonight. They pulled out a nice victory here over the Spurs. Um, so because of that, there's really nothing, no one here can really scoop up. Um, Bogdan might have been dropped. So maybe you pick him up if he's out there. But other than that, all these other guys are probably owned. So, uh, oh, but Belitz, uh, I'm not too big on. I, I, would, I think you can find other guys on teams that are going full tank mode. Um, so do not recommend him. Uh, we'll see if Bagley comes back next game or if they're going to shut him down for the season. On the Spurs side, um, these guys, they're playing for positions, like, like you said, like Oklahoma City, Aldridge, 27-18, uh, 12-24, with 24 shooting two steals and a block. DeRozan, 16 points, two rebounds, seven assists, nice three steals here too. Rudy Gay gets a start, puts up a nice line, 18 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists on 8 of 12 shooting, 2 three-pointers. Derek White, as you mentioned, has been struggling as of late. Just shot 3 of 10 tonight, only had 6 points, only had 3 assists, 3 rebounds. Uh, did have a block to add. Bryn Forbes, he's been doing okay, 15 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 5 of 9 shooting, 2 three-pointers. Won't do much defensively, but he'll get you a couple of threes and some other stats, shoot relatively efficiently. Um, let's see here. Uh, Portal back to the bench, 12 minutes tonight. No fantasy value to speak of. Same with Bertrands and Patty Mills. Bill Nelly has been shooting lights out for three recently, but not lights out. He's been chucking them up for three, I should say. Six attempts tonight, but um, that's all he's really going to do for you. Uh, so I don't really recommend him. You know, the only guys here I really trust are the guys that have been taken for a long time now, Aldridge, um, DeRozan, and Gay. So um, no one else here I'm, I'm comfortable with. So I would look elsewhere for pickups. Um, how do you feel about this first? Speaking of trust, man, I do not trust Derek White anymore. You know, I've been just playing this guy out of necessity because I have so many hurt guys. I'm done with him, man. I might, I might drop him for Christian Wood, actually. That's... That might be my drop. I'm going to move on from Derek White. Very disappointing that he never uh, bounced back from his injury because he was on fire before he got hurt earlier in the season. And uh, if you were streaming Pirtle, uh, you can move on from that. If he's going to, you know, they, Gay played really nice in the starting lineup. I think they should leave Rudy Gay there and just keep Pirtle on the bench. So move on from Jakob Pirtle. All right. Uh, Let's keep going. Let's move over to the next one, the Wizards and the Nuggets. Uh, this was a little surprising, man. The, the Wizards beating the Nuggets 95-90. to Going to jump over to the Wizards first. And um, I'll start with Bradley Beal. 17 points, 3 steals, 6 assists, 3 rebounds. 6 of 16 from the field is and 5 of 5 from the line. You know, what an amazing season Bradley Beal's having. A lot of chatter already that uh, his draft stock 
took a big uh, big increase this season. We, we we're probably going to see him being drafted like towards the end of the first round, I think, next year. And I think he's going to deserve that um, that draft spot. Um, Thomas Bryant, 20 points, three blocks, three assists, 14 rebounds. This is a really interesting guy, I think, for next season. A guy I might take like a late round shot on to see if he can steal the starting job in Washington, the starting center spot. And, you know, another guy that I actually really liked – um, coming into the draft is Troy Brown Jr. Neil actually drafted this guy in a bunch of deep dynasty leagues because I think this guy could be a really good pro one day. It, it, he hasn't had a great rookie year. The Wizards, not a great team for him to land on because they're so loaded. They're, they're starting five is so locked in. But we saw glimpses of what he's capable here. 24 points and assists, a steal, seven rebounds. Five threes, shot nine of 16 from the field, 101 from the line. Sadoransky's been solid, but wasn't so great in this one. He only shot one of six from the field for five points, uh, five assists, six boards, one steal. He shot three of four from the line. You know, Bobby Portis had a monster game the other night, but really uh, stumbled in this one. Only shot one of nine for two points and nine rebounds. So not a good game from Bobby Portis, but I would still keep him locked in my lineup if I had him. I I don't have any shares of him. Uh, I don't think we see Ariza. I don't know if he's officially been ruled out, but we know he's done Dwight's. We haven't seen Dwight in forever. John Wall, we're not going to see till late next year. So, uh, man, very disappointing. Neil, what do you think of the Wizards? Um, a couple guys here that uh, that uh, piqued my curiosity. Um, I would say Thomas Bryant first, number one, if he's still out there. Uh, Jabari Parker had a has been playing really well off the bench, getting like Lou Williams type uh, usage coming off the bench. Um, and then yeah, Troy Brown. I had no idea who this guy was and just so recently. And um, last couple games has gotten some nice um run and put up some decent stats so i think he's another candidate for down the last five games to be fantasy like one of those guys that can get you a lot of statistics in a short period of time because no one no one's heard of him and you get him off the bench i think parker may be taken bryant may already be taken so then i think troy brown um i would pick up if i was still uh in a competitive league um anyway let's go over to the denver side Jokic had a great game, but he got ejected here, Adrian. I don't know if he had two technicals or he just had one, and I don't know what happened. Uh, anyway, he did, not, he did not close the game, which might explain the outcome. 23 points, though, beforehand, 14 rebounds, 4 assists, 11 of 15 from the field. He's so efficient. Two steals and a block. Millsap had a nice game, too. Double-doubles with 13 points, 16 rebounds, 3 assists. Uh, did not shoot that well, 3 of 13, but uh, those 16 rebounds are helpful in getting their win. Uh, Barton, 10-4-4. Four four. Hasn't been that great. Um, same with Gary Harris. Just nine points tonight, one rebound. I would look elsewhere. Now that we have so many guys emerging on the wing on different teams, I would let those two guys go. Jamal Murray, I still trust him. 12 points, two rebounds, two assists on four of eight shooting. Two three-pointers and a block. Um, Monte Morris, I streamed him. Did not work out today. Not much to speak of. Malik Beasley, I thought was going to be out for more of an extended period of time. He has been back the last couple of games, so that is taken into uh, Monte's usage. And then Plumlee's been okay. Uh, nine points, 11 rebounds, 4-7 shooting, a block. Um, 25 minutes a night. He's been doing okay. You know, they've been, they haven't pushed Jokic as much down the stretch. Plumlee's gotten 25, 23, 23 minutes. Um, you need rebounds, field goal percentage. Uh, and the occasional block, he might be able to help. But I think I'd rather have Christian Wood if I had to pick the unit too. So, anyway, any thoughts on the You know, uh, Jamal Murray left this game in the third quarter. He sprained his ankle. And I'm kind of curious, you know, they are trying to fend off Houston, who's uh, in the third seed right below them. Only three and a half games back. But um, I'm kind of curious if we see... Jamal Murray miss some time you know he actually missed six games earlier in the season due to an injury on the same ankle I think they want him to be a hundred percent for the playoffs so 
If we hear he's going to miss some time, I think Monty Morris is going to be your uh, pickup. So keep an eye on that situation, and we'll see what happens. I, if we hear it's not serious, I would think Jamal Murray's going to play because I don't think they want to lose that second seed to Houston. But if they are worried, I think it's possible they shut him down. So it's an interesting situation there. Uh, all right, let's jump into it. Neil, I think this is the last game you and then i'm gonna have one more on my own so uh, i believe it's the hornets and the warriors this one was not close a blowout uh, um 137 to 90 you know they were talking about how steph curry it was uh his hometown is charlotte and he has gone undefeated this season in charlotte so always seems to play there but i'm gonna take a look on the charlotte side you know with this game being a blowout, we saw some extended run for uh, some of the bench guys. Bridges has been starting and playing. Wasn't a good game for really any of the uh, Hornets here, but he had nine points. Keep him locked and loaded, though. Looks like with the Hornets not making the playoffs, they're going to give some extended run to guys like Bridges. Bacon also had 28 minutes, had nine points, two assists of three. He shot three of nine. Kemba Walker, man, this was not his game. Only four of 14 for nine points, three assists, two steals. But I would still keep Kemba locked and loaded. Uh, Marvin Williams, awful game. Only two points in 21 minutes. Only shot one of five. That's awful. Biombo got to start but played eight minutes. Did nothing. Gave you zero points. I mean, one block, but that's about it. What an awful game. Batum didn't do much. Only two points in 24 minutes. Uh, Hernan Gomez maybe had the best game out of anyone on the Hornets side. 22 points. An assist, five boards. He shot four of eight. He was 14 of 15 from the line. So maybe the only good line uh, from the Hornets. Lamb, only 11 points here. Did have two steals and two blocks, five assists, three boards, one three. But, man, really tough to trust these bench guys. Neil, what do you think of the Charlotte Hornets? Yeah, not much tonight, man. They got smoked. Um Oh uh, gosh! So I have been. I, I was streaming a bacon this week. Um, he's had some pretty good games. I just came up against a really good team. You know, they were a very good defensive team and just shut down the entire perimeter. So no one got going on this team tonight. Um, I kind of just throw it away. It looks like Lamb though is back, um, and it looks like they're playing all their guys. We'll see. I mean, Walker been playing full complement of minutes. Uh, Marvin Williams still out there. I think Lamb might be the one wing. I'd, Lamb and Bridges, I think both should be owned um, if you're streaming guys. And then maybe Bacon would be my third wing. Um, but I'm not, I'm not touching Biombo. Even more of the one I'm letting go. And then, of course, Kemba go out there. So um, Kemba, obviously, number one. And then I'd go with, uh, excuse me, Lamb and Bridges. Uh, hopefully they can do okay. Um, on the Golden State side, it was just, I believe Cousins got ejected too, um, which I guess isn't breaking news for uh, NBA. Uh, yeah, he got ejected after 11 minutes. I guess he got like a um, a flagrant wow. two. I don't know who he who was on. It might have been on Hernan Gomez. But anyway, he got a flagrant two, so I guess that's an automatic ejection. Uh, up until that point, he was eight points, three rebounds, two assists, uh, three blocks, so one steal. So did have some decent stats in just 11 minutes. Um, Kevin Durant, uh, kind of a quiet night for him. 11 points, two rebounds, nine assists on five of five shooting. Didn't need to really do too much. Draymond Green, 10 points, five rebounds, nine assists. This is kind of what we expect. Two threes in the block. Uh, Steph, like you said, he plays well against Charlotte. 25 points, five rebounds, six assists, five three pointers, two steals in a block. Um, this team is going to, you know, every time I want to write them off, I just, they're just so good. Uh, Clay Thompson, 27 minutes, 24 points. Went 6 of 9 from three-point land. Uh, Quinn Cook got extended run here. Can't trust him, though. Oh, it's only going to be out there when there's a blowout. Although that, that could happen. I guess the last couple games of the season, if they are you know, in, in that one seed, you might see a lot of Cook and McKinney and Looney. But uh, until then, don't um, go, get, go pick up those guys. Um not much else here except Golden State. They're just like, it's like it's almost unfair sometimes to watch them play against the bad team. Anyway, 
What are your thoughts on the Warriors? Yeah, I love that you just said it's like almost not fair, right? I mean, I feel like, Neil, like they haven't even had a spectacular year and they still kind of cruise, like cruise into the, into the number one seed, right? Like they've had multiple injuries. Yeah. They've had a little bit of dysfunction, like guys getting into arguments and stuff. And it's like they still lock up the number one seed. And as long as they can roll into the playoffs at full strength, you know, I, I'd expect some of these guys to sit. Uh, I would expect Durant, Curry, Thompson, Green to maybe miss a game or two um, as we get in this final week. They they want to be 100% going into the postseason. And, uh, I mean, Neil, would you say that – would you bet on anyone to not come out of the – I mean, wouldn't you say that if you had to bet – they're your choice to come out of the West, right? I mean, we, we, we've we seen a lot of great teams this year, but it's like you still don't believe anyone's going to beat the Warriors in the West in a seven-game series, right? Oh, yeah. I don't think it's going to be close. I think they're going to get out of the West with maybe two losses yeah. <laughs> over, over their three hey. series. Yeah. Yeah, maybe three losses. I think they're just so good. Um, we'll see. Uh, I certainly won't be rooting for them. I like to yeah. the underdog, nothing personal. But, same yeah. here, man. I'm in the same boat. I would love to see somebody knock them off, but I don't know. I don't know who it would be. But anyways, uh, Neil, one more week to go. Final week of the season. Uh, any closing thoughts on the show before we get out of here or before we get you out of here? Uh, congratulations to the two guys <laughs> who beat me this week in Roto. Uh, I'm finally trying to get over it. Anyway, um, no, it's been a fun fantasy season. I'm looking forward to the playoffs um, where um, it's kind of nice the fantasy's over. You know, it's, 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 so, it's I take it so, I get so stressed uh, during the season, especially in these playoff head-to-head things. I don't know if I can do head-to-head anymore. Either, but, <laughs> <laughs> with, all, with all the rest, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's resting now? It's just like, oh. This, so the, you know, I, um, I say this, I think, every year. This year feels like, it's the worst it's ever been. But then again, I say that every single year. But this year, man, I, I, <laughs> it is seriously so hard to keep track of all the guys missing games. It is ridiculous how many guys are missing games. Yeah. And just brutal in your head-to-head leagues. And um, it's just insane. Anyways, you guys, one more week to go. So uh, we will be back tomorrow. I will be back for one more game. Neil, thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry uh, for your losses, but I, I still think you had a fantastic season, man. And uh, so I still say congratulations to you, sir, man. So... Um, all right, you guys. Hey, hit Neil up on Twitter. He's at Ball with Neil. Hit me up. I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Uh, we will be back for tomorrow, but I will be back for one more game. So hang in there, guys. What's up, you guys? I am back for the final game of the evening. Let's jump into it. The uh, Clippers getting the victory, one thirteen to ninety six. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the Memphis Grizzlies side first. Going to start with DeLon Wright. With uh, um, with all the injuries and, uh, you know, Conley is out. It's really clearing the way for DeLon Wright, and he played very nice. 20 points, a block, three steals, four assists with eight rebounds. He had two threes on six of 12 shooting from the field. He also was six of 10 from the line. Justin Holiday getting some good minutes, but um, not shooting well. Only three of 10, had nine points. Three steals, one assist, and two rebounds. He did add a three and went two a two from the line. Tyler Dorsey also starting, getting decent minutes. He's worth the stream if you need some help. 14 points for him. Didn't do much else. Uh, did add two threes and went six to 12 from the field. Jonas Valanciunas has been pretty hot starting getting really good minutes. He actually went down with an ankle injury on this one. I'm expecting him to miss some games. Uh, It didn't look that great, that ankle injury. He needed to be helped um, off the court. So, I mean, I would expect at least 
for him to miss a few games, if not, maybe even get shut down for the rest. I mean, we only have another week left, so um, with him going down, I think, it. I mean, you got to own Caboclo and maybe Ivan Rabb. Those might be the two guys that you want to look at. Speaking of Caboclo, he got into some foul trouble, so um, only got 20 minutes in this one. Had He had eight points. Um he had eight points, uh, two blocks, two assists, two rebounds, two threes on three of six shooting. Hopefully he'll be better in the next one. Uh, not too much to talk about the belt bench. Chandler Parsons has been playing better than I thought, but I don't really trust him in a bench role, although he did have a nice line tonight, 17 points. Two assists, one steal, three rebounds. He had one three, shot five of 11 from the field. He was a perfect six of six from the line. He could be worth a stream. And then Ivan Rabb is the other guy that I'd look at. He had foul trouble, only played 16 minutes, but uh, I'd expect him to get more time if uh, Valanciun is, is going to miss some games. All right, that's about it for the Grizzlies. Super disappointed that we're not going to see Jaron Jackson Jr. again till next year. Um, and yeah, okay, let's jump over to the Clippers. Danilo Gallinari, 27 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists. He added a 3, shot 6 of 11 from the field, 4 of 16 from the line. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Um, Landry Shamet, uh played 30 minutes, man, but only shot made one basket. Uh, but he shot one of nine for three points, one steal, three assists, three rebounds. So uh, it's a pretty disappointing game from Shamet if you were streaming him. Shea Gills Alexander has been really good lately, but um, only shot two of six in this one for six points. Uh, did have two blocks, four steals, three assists, four rebounds. I know I can speak for Neil. Uh, Neil and I are very excited about the long-term uh, prospect of Shea Gills Alexander. Pat Beverly uh, only shot one of four in 25 minutes for three points. Did have four assists, four rebounds, but pretty disappointing game from him. Zubak was with only 13 points in 21 minutes. Um, so, you know, with this game uh, being, uh, you know, with the Clippers kind of having this game in hand, um, they leaned a little bit more on their bench. And uh, Williams got 17, 17 points, one steal, two assists, three rebounds, one three. He shot six to 12. Uh, Green had 15 points in 22 minutes. Temple, uh, he only had two points. Uh, Montres Harrell is the guy that you want to own. I, I'm still a little disappointed that he's only getting like 21 minutes. Um, I would love to see him, you know, get 30 minutes a game, but still put up 20 points, a block, an assist, a rebound, and... Um, that's about it for the Clippers and for this game. Thanks, Thank you guys again for listening and supporting the show. Neil and I will be back to take a look at Monday's games. So we will see you guys soon. Thanks. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.